When did you take that leap to move from just doing the business, you know, on the side to actually being full time? Oh, honey, I just did it. Oh, you just did it. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Welcome to We Built This Brand. I'm your host, as always, Chris Hill. And today on the podcast, we're talking to Kelsey Miller. She's the founder of Closets by Kelsey, which is a business focused on organizing, styling, and personal shopping that's based right here in my hometown of Knoxville, Tennessee. Now, she's had a lot of experience organizing, styling, and personal shopping for her friends and family for a long time. And just in the past few years, she has finally turned that into a business. So in this episode, we're going to talk about her journey, what led her to start this business, what led her to leave her corporate job. And we're going to talk about all the challenges that come with that. She also gives me some great fashion advice and some organizational tips. And of course, it wouldn't be a branding podcast without some branding in it, right? We talk about personal branding. We talk about fashion. And of course, we're going to commiserate about the challenges of running a small business while we're at it. So I think you'll really enjoy this one. I had a lot of fun. Kelsey's a great host. She was a great guest and just love the opportunity to interview her on this episode. So without further ado, here's my conversation with Kelsey Miller. All righty. Well, welcome back. I'm joined today by Kelsey Miller. Kelsey, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for coming into my home and doing what you do, sharing people's stories and especially local. And I think that's amazing. So oh, thank well, you for having me a part of it. I can tell you do interior design. In fact, your business is Closets by Kelsey. Yes. Yeah, I do. I feel like a little bit of everything. I'm a true Aquarius. I'm very creative, <laughs> unique and kind of go to the beat of my own drum. But I, yeah, I love all things design, fashion, interior. I just truly believe that if you surround yourself with things and items that you love and bring you joy, that just kind of, you know, goes through the mind, body and spirit of yourself. So that's awesome. Yes, <laughs> that's really neat. So how did how did all of this get started? Well, so it started actually when I was very, very young, when my parents were going through a divorce, actually. So I think through a lot of therapy, <laughs> I've realized that organizing and keeping things tidy was my way to control my environment and seeing how order and organizing made me feel better. I just, I love that feeling and I want, wanted to create a business where I can help others find that space of like calm and look at organizing as something not scary. It's more of a therapeutic system. I get, I get that. We didn't have you come in, but we, we did have just some housekeepers come in and clean our house over Christmas season. And I did it as a gift to my wife because she's a oh, school teacher. Gift. We have That's two kids. That's amazing. Really busy. And it was just, it was a load off. Like it was, mm -hmm. a, they were there for longer than they expected to be, but <laughs> we had a lot to do, but it was really good. Mm -hmm. And I can definitely, definitely tell and definitely attest to like that mental health that comes with keeping a space organized and clean mm -hmm. and and nice. There's just something about walking into a space that's prepared and ready where you just go, oh, yeah, I'm here and everything's where it should be. This is nice. Life is stressful enough. So if I can help my clients maintain a stress-free lifestyle through my organizing services, through styling or personal shopping, then I'm doing my purpose, my life's work. Yeah. That's awesome. So, so it started when you were young, inspired you, and then where did it actually become a business? How did you start getting paid for it? After college, I went to MTSU. I went to school for fashion merchandising, oh. and I learned so much. I loved it, but I thought I wanted to be a buyer. And so after college, I worked for this boutique that I adore and still shop with, and I was the store manager and assistant buyer there. And I love the aspect of working with my clients and I would style them and pick out personalized outfits for them and seeing how that made a difference in their lives and gave them so much joy, made them feel good about themselves. I realized that I'm supposed to do something along those lines. So then that kind of evolved to, well, you know, my clients would come to me and tell me, oh my gosh, my closet's a mess. And I'm like, I organize my sweaters on a weekend. I would love to come and help you 
do a closet edit and see what you need, see what you need to get rid of. So there we started a service with that boutique that they still use to this day. They do a closet edit and styling service still, which is great. So that's really how it got started. But of course, when you're young and I just never thought this could be a career and be a business, but it really took off in 2020 when I was actually a sales rep for a fashion company in Atlanta. Loved it, worked with buyers. So I went on the opposite side of the table. And because I was like, you know, what? I don't really like these spreadsheets and <laughs> buying and being in control of all this inventory. So I love people. I love clothes. And I was like, heck, let's be a sales rep. So fun. Loved it. But when COVID hit, I couldn't travel anymore. And my family and friends knew I did organizing as a hobby and enjoyed it. So they would call me and be like, Kelsey, can you please come and just help me pick out an outfit or my living room is a wreck. The toy situation and the kids room, you know, it was so when that started happening, it just clicked. I was like, wow, I could turn this into a business. Hmm. Never really thought my hobby or a passion could do that. So that's how it kind of got started. That's really cool. So it turned into, it went from a a hobby into mm-hmm. being more of a full-time business. And so at what point did you realize this is something? It's not just a hobby or a side hustle. Like at what point did you have that moment of what I call moment of validation in your business where you're like, okay, I can do this and I don't have to do this other job. Yes. So I believe that getting validation from my clients and the people that I was working with they would tell me that I was changing their daily life. I was making their quality of life better. So to me, that is more than any amount of money I could make. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, like that's, I'm just very purpose driven. And so that was just validation for me. All right, you have got to continue to do this. Like you're making a difference in people's lives and you love what you do and it brings you joy and them joy. That's, that's really cool. So you're, you're not just, you're not working like you're not just like a housekeeping service or you're not just custom designing closets. I think when I first heard the name, my thought went to, oh, are you doing like custom design closets for people? But it sounds like this is really more of a, a personalized service. Then. Yeah, it was very much so. So basically I do home organizing, personal and interior styling and personal shopping. So it's more of a creative avenue as well. Okay. And in what when you mean personal and interior, what about the personal aspects of it? Like how what what are you focused on? What do you how do you approach that with people to personalize? So we all have unique qualities about us and we all have something that makes us smile, that gives us a spark. And I try to put that in the home Hmm. and put that into the wardrobe. And that normally comes along with creating order. I think everyone wants to have some sort of order in their life. And so helping them come up with a system that works with their everyday life while also adding some flair and color, whatever that may be, that you know, what they want. And that's what I want for my client. So moving beyond just when you got started, like you've got the validation, you got the business. When did you take that leap to move from just doing the business, you know, on Mm -hmm. the side to actually being full time? Oh, honey, I just did it. Oh, you just did it. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, I've just realized that I have this entrepreneur spirit in me and I'm the only person holding myself back. Mm. So I just have to do it. And I think sometimes you just have to take a risk in order to see if you fail or succeed. And that's the feedback from the universe that you get, you Mm -hmm. know, like you never know unless you try. Yeah. So at least if I tried, I did something that I love, you know. So we're, we're talking about helping personalize for people's style, people's homes, mm-hmm. all these different things. W- what kind of market do you really serve? Like who are who is your target customer? So with my target market, I have evolved, I think, more into a lifestyle 
brand and business. So this is catered towards, I would say, mainly women in their 30s all the way to, oh my gosh, even 60s, 70s. Because I would say my services apply to major milestones in people's lives. So mm. a lot of time it's someone's getting married, someone just bought a house, um, the kids are graduating, they're out of the house, new baby, or even it could be, you know, my husband died, my wife died. It's all very situational. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think it applies to a wide range when it comes to age, which is great. And I think that also my demographic is obviously someone that does have, you know, a disposable income. It is a bit of a luxury service, but I tell my clients, you deserve luxury, honey. You deserve to have a peace of mind. You deserve to look good and feel good in your home, you know? Um, but what's great is I do offer customizable packages. So, you know, if budget is an issue, I will do my best to try to help you as best as I can with the budget that you have. That's awesome. Um, on your website and in your branding, because this is We Built This Brand, I noticed that your tagline is a new space, a new you. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? I don't know, really. I mean, I think it just kind of came to me whenever I just have like personally organized my space. I've realized I'm like, oh my gosh, like what I just did and created, I created literally a new space and I feel like a new person. So I want my clients to feel that way too, because it is, it is a lifestyle change. Like you're changing a lot, mm -hmm. you know, like whenever you are going through this process. And I even feel like, you know, the tagline will evolve into a, you know, a different approach too. It's like, not just a new space, a new you, it's, you know, a new environment, a new being. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of where it came from and will slowly evolve, I'm sure. How is the brand evolving today? As my business grows, I feel like you have to brand mm. differently a little bit. You know, like I said, I feel like I'm gearing more towards being a lifestyle brand because a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, where do you get your products? Where do you get your clothing? And, you know, I've realized doing this that some people just don't know where to shop. People don't know how to find the right products that is going to work with their everyday life or that makes sense. So I think with like the branding approach, it's really kind of evolving more towards, I think, kind of like elevating your life if that makes sense like more of an elevated lifestyle elevated look elevated space so that's kind of where my brand is going towards like i think i want to be called like the elevated queen you know like <laughs> just elevating your life honey mind body and spirit here we come you know yeah i love that the elevated queen <laughs> yes all right. So before we started recording, you mentioned that you're doing some, I think, nonprofit or some mm -hmm. phil philanthropic work, if I can get my words out. Tell me about that. What are you doing? Yeah. So with my business and just also personally, I am all about paying it forward. And just because something you don't use anymore or that doesn't give you joy anymore doesn't mean that that can be passed on to someone else. So I try to reduce, reuse, recycle as much as possible. Clothing, um, food, interior, furniture, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I work with a lot of local nonprofits here in Knoxville. Those that, that are very dear to me that I really work with, and I think they make a huge difference in people's lives, is Ladies of Charity, great organization, as well as Care Cuts. So they help a lot of people in the homeless community. Oh, and I also work with um, some halfway houses. So help people get, you know, back on their feet. So, mm. and also just knowing that I work with local charities and all of their stuff is going to be donated. It helps, I think, trigger something in the client's mind. That's like, oh, wow. Like, I don't have to keep this. I don't have to have this guilt of getting rid of it because it's going to help someone else. So I think that's something that's a part of my mission that's very important is just to continue to pay it forward. I mean, look at all the the makeover shows you see where they take like a homeless person and they clean them up and mm -hmm. help them 
get back on their feet and go out for a job interview. I mean, just that restyling, that update, all that stuff makes a big difference. Yeah. And it's kind of like what I do, but yeah, you know what I mean? So it's just, I don't know. I just think it's a beautiful just rendition of what you can do to change people's lives in just different ways. Yeah. It's nice because it's a natural extension of your business. Like it's something you're already doing. You're already in this world and then you're helping make sure that things don't go to waste. Yeah. Which as you, you know, move into becoming a parent and all that, mm-hmm. you're going to find that kids go through clothing like crazy. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest things for our family has been that people have just shared clothing with us because it's like, well, our child, you know, grew out of that in two weeks. Mm-hmm. So now it's ours for a week and a half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Until, until it gets used again. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's that's really neat to see. And um, that's really awesome that you're doing that. Thank you. Yeah. We touched on personal branding a little bit, personal styling. What is your philosophy on personal branding, personal styling? Or how do the, how do the two combine? It, like in my business or just my client or everything. Your 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 thesis. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um I think just being unapologetically yourself. And because no one is Kelsey, no one is Chris. And I think people need to find that within themselves, their individuality and what makes them them and run with it because there's nothing better than a confident person no matter where you're from what you look like what you have so and i just i think that's also just a part of my branding and my business i try to help my clients find that Hmm. spark yeah are there any tips for maybe those listeners out there that might want some help with personal branding or personal styling absolutely i think Finding inspiration is key. And I mean, you can find that in, oh my gosh, social media, Pinterest. You know, I find a lot in Pinterest, magazines, even celebrities. You know, I often ask my clients if they had an idea of who they would like to emulate as Mm. far as a celebrity goes. Like, who would it be? What about for you? That's a great question. Celebrity, I would want to emulate. Probably Conan O'Brien. We're talking podcasting. Like, I love what he's, how he's managed to go from talk TV to, you know, to that. I don't know that he has the best style. So maybe Stephen Colbert. He's more. Oh, yes. I love him and his personality. It's like fun and like Mm -hmm. quirky, Mm -hmm. you know? So with you telling me that, it's like, oh, okay. So I'm thinking we need, you know, like a really cool, like tailored, blazer you know we need some nice denim we need a really good crisp button down you know we need some really good gucci looking loafers you know what i mean but you know adding your own flair to it you know so just finding inspiration in that and it just like makes my head like these wheels spin because i just love creating and helping people find pieces that make them feel good and comfortable and confident yeah Yeah, I I get that. I mean, it takes a lot to be comfortable in your own skin, comfortable in Mm -hmm. the clothes you wear and, you know, finding clothes that fit and make sense for you. I think the biggest challenge, though, that my clients have is just finding like an everyday outfit. Mm -hmm. And I've realized capsule wardrobing has been very key in helping me with my clients. What is that? So capsule wardrobing is where you have just some of the basics. So your basic T-shirt white, black, gray, basic denim, basic boot, black boot, Chelsea boot, you know, just having the checklist so then you can interchange those. It makes it easier so you don't have to think about it. That makes a lot of sense. I am not a fashion forward person. Um, so. <laughs> oh, I will help you anytime. Okay. I might be calling you up after this. So. <laughs> Love it. Well, very cool. So what what is the next evolution of Closets by Kelsey? What's coming next for your business? Yeah. So in May, I'm actually going to be launching a virtual course, a mm. service. So... I am really excited. It's going to be super fun. So basically, we're going to be just starting with your closet. And sometimes it's really hard for people to start with just because I try to tell my clients to start small, start with a place that doesn't have a lot of sentimental value. So I think the first week we will do probably like a junk drawer just to kind of like get your toe in the water and go through the process a little bit and how that works And yeah, I'm really excited. So I'm hoping the virtual aspect will kind of help me connect with people outside of Knoxville Mm. 
and maybe just also introduce my business, myself, my brand to new potential clients. Even though it's virtual, maybe they might have me in their home. Um, yeah, and I think it's just another great way for me to get feedback about my business and how to improve it and what clients want and what they need. And I mean, that's that's a need. There's people all over that aren't necessarily in Knoxville or maybe can't get out of their home for one reason or another. And having that ability to have you come and help is really awesome. Yeah, I, I'm very excited about it. And I think another aspect of it is people get a little insecure about their space or embarrassed. So sometimes, it, I mean, it's hard if it, when a stranger comes into your home and goes through your things. So I'm hoping like this can help them, I think, feel a little bit, little bit more comfortable as well. Because, you know, my clients, whenever I work with them, they go through their things so much easier. But it's just because they have a helping hand, like a guiding voice. So hopefully just virtually I can also do that for my clients. One of my last questions, and I always like to ask this on the podcast, is what brand, and you being in fashion and all this, I'm sure you're going to have a very interesting answer. What brand would you say is the brand you most admire right now? You know, that is so hard. <laughs> I've been thinking about it a lot because I absolutely adore clothing and brands. But I would say currently and in my state that I'm in, my pregnancy, <laughs> I would definitely say The Gap because they have great basics and they are maternity friendly mm. as well as free people. Oh, my gosh. I mean, their flowy dresses are amazing and they have these like spandex rompers. So I would say, yeah, free people and Gap currently because that is what's currently fitting my body type that I'm getting used to. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All part of the process. Yes. Gap's a brand I've I've liked for a while just for clothes and stuff. And um, I think they're tied to Banana Republic, aren't they? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they're under the same umbrella. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I, I have fallen in love with Banana Republic jeans. So that's... Yeah, it's good quality stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I'm sad they took, took, out, took the one out of the mall, though. Absurd. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand the logic. Totally awful decision. But whatever. They made it. And uh, yeah, we have to buy online now, I guess. I mean, that's the thing. Like maternity, it is absolutely a tragedy when I see some maternity things. I'm like, <laughs> we do not want to dress like that, you know? So I've had to venture online. And, you know, people think just because I love clothes and love shopping that I like online shopping. Mm. I'm very much like a touch, feel, try on type of person, mm -hmm. you know? So that's been, that's been, you know, a little bit of a change, but, you know. Whatever. It's fine. Well, Kelsey, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, before we go, I want to make sure that you get a chance to promote anything that you want to promote. So tell us, I think your new online course yes. is what we want to talk about. But if there's anything else, and of course, social media, where can people find you? Yes, I'm on all the socials, Closets by Kelsey. Um, you can also go to closetsbykelsey.com and that's Closets with a K. So, you know, K by K, you know, a little tagline. Oh, Got to keep it catchy. <laughs> and um, so, yeah. And you can also fill out an inquiry form if you're interested in any of my services or have any questions. I would love to help and connect. All righty. Well, Kelsey, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Chris. Oh, my gosh. And I admire your podcast voice Aww. so much. You have such a good <laughs> podcast voice. I'm going to listen to this and be like, oh, oh my gosh, that hick girl. <laughs> like, yikes. Oh, no. You're, you sound great. <laughs> And we'll make you sound great, too. So. Uh, perfect. Thank the <laughs> Lord for editing. Okay, great. That's what we do. All right. Thank you so much. Yay. Thank you. So fun. 